All right, thanks for coming back. Uh, we're all warmed up, we're all mobilized, we're all stabilized for bench. And now we're gonna go over the setup for the bench press. Same crew as always, Brian Kane. Anson Lee. Amber Dodd. So stick with us and we'll show you a thing or two. Oh! oh. Well, we've done the last two videos. That's true. That's true. It's time for you to speak. speak. So, first thing that we're going to go over today is we're going to talk about a top setup versus bottom setup. Uh, setting up from the shoulders first, or set, setting up from the feet feet first. And then we're going to go into individual things uh, like sub key points for those uh, as far as like hand position, foot position, heels up, heels down, head position, different kinds of leg drive, all of that. We're going to show the two different kinds of setup first. I'm going to show a top first setup uh, with Amber. So she's going to lay down on the bench. And generally what we see here is people will either, uh, they'll swing, they'll use their arms uh, to jam into the uprights. They'll use this to create a lot of upper back tension and to get as much of their body weight back onto their traps and their neck as they can. This is going to help create a, a high arch. And then she's going to set her feet onto the floor in a way that she can create enough leg drive through the quads. And then from there, she's ready to bench. So, yep. All right, cool. Uh, now we're gonna show a bottom setup. Uh, typically, uh, we'll see like a swing through setup here where uh, the lifter will uh, position, posi position themselves behind the bench. So typically, uh, this is gonna work better. Like I said, this is, kind of, this is difficult to talk about with talk, without talking about all the other uh, some points that we want to go over, but this is going to work better for somebody that generally has a heels up set up with a, with a higher arch. So what Amber is going to do here is she's going to find a, a position for her feet where she can be comfortable once she's in her bench press, set, bench press set up, but also create enough tension and maintain her arch. So she's going to set her feet, she's going to swing through, and she's going to do her best to keep her feet where they are once, once she swings through. And then everything else is going to be pretty similar to the top setup where she's going to set tension through her upper back and then be ready to unwrap the bar. Remember, when you set your feet for this one, when you set your feet, so get in there, swing in there like you're setting up. So she's all set right now with her feet. And you'll see people like, like you know, maybe your hip cramps or something, you'll see people do this, like, the, you know, kick out like that. You're already lost. You already lost. Yeah. Might if as you, well. Might as well restart the yes, setup at that if you, point. If you're gonna set up bottom first, the bottom has to stay set because it's all about creating tension. <clears throat> we call it leg drive, but think about it like you're stabilizing. Yeah. So I, I cover this a lot with my own remote clients. I'm sure you guys do too. Uh, where once people are set up and they're ready to unwrap the bar, we'll see a lot of movement from the feet, or people. Will, yeah, people will shimmy the feet around, or I just call it happy feet. That they're. If you're doing that in your setup or during during the execution of the bench press itself, then you're you're not achieving anything, as Brian just talked about. The purpose of leg drive is to create stability and to help us maintain our arch during the movement of the bench press. So if your feet are moving around, if you're having this little happy feet thing happen here, then you're not creating any stability. So my constant leg drive is key. So uh, all right, we'll go on to the next point. All right, guys, so we're going to cover hand position and arching uh, for the next part of this video. This fucking dog. <laughs> That's my dog. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, next part of the video here, we're going to cover hand position and arching and how these two uh, really interplay with each other. So first things first, uh, if you're watching this and you're not familiar with powerlifting, arching is not bad. As long as you're doing it through the upper back, if you're arching through the lower back, then that is not okay. Arching through the upper back is not unsafe. It's not bad for your back. It's actually safer to bench press with an arch. So we can go ahead and get that out of the way. Generally, what we'll see is we'll either see a wide grip or we'll see a medium to close grip. And there are going to be two different types of arches we commonly see associated with these two, uh, with these two grip options. Generally, what we'll see with a wide grip is we will see a higher arch. And generally with somebody with a closer grip, we'll see a lower arch. And it's important to know why having a higher arch works better with a wider grip and why having a lower arch plays better with a closer grip. So we're going to get into that. So I'll have Amber here uh, do her normal setup, high arch, wide grip. <clears throat> She's 
gonna have her feet tucked back pretty far underneath her, basically directly <laughs> under her hips, and she's gonna have her heels up. So she's gonna unrack the bar. She's gonna touch that high point on her arch, and then she's gonna press. And you can see if you were to watch from the side here, Amber has a pretty vertical bar path. Right? There's not a lot of drift back on the bar. And the reason being is because of her arch and because of her hand placement. The higher arch we have and the wider grip we have, the more vertical our bar path is gonna be. And that's gonna be because of a lot of things. It's gonna be because of the leg drive. The farther tucked back you have your feet underneath you, the more vertical your leg drive is gonna be. The more your feet are out in front of you, the more, uh, the, the more horizontal the leg drive and the bar path is gonna be. So if you have a wider grip and you have a high arch, you will pr generally, remember these are general tips, you will generally benefit from having your feet tucked back farther underneath you. But now I'm gonna have Amber set up a little bit differently. She's gonna have her feet. I'll hop in. Okay, yeah, because yeah. yeah. I'm immobile, so. Sure. My grip is gonna be essentially the same on the bar as hers, but look at me. Like, that means it's yeah. way closer than hers. All right, so Brian is gonna, literally he's gonna be the polar opposite of, of Amber. He has more of, you can see that his feet aren't tucked back nearly as far underneath him. He has more of a, a vertical shin angle in his bench setup. He obviously has a much lower arch here. And if you look at his grip compared to Amber's, it's a lot more narrow. So now Brian here, uh, <clears throat> So given that you know, I just explained to you uh, what is going to generally work well for somebody with a high arch and vertical leg drive, Brian has a low arch and he has more of a horizontal leg drive. So the way I like to cue this for people in this kind of bench is to imagine that you're trying to push yourself off the back of the bench, right? You're trying to drive back as much with your legs. You're not pushing up, you're pushing back. So what this is gonna do to the bar path is it's going to create a more of a J-shaped bar path. The bar is going to drift back over your face as you press. It's not going to be straight up. You're going to push off your chest and then you're going to see the elbows flare and the bar is going to drift back over their face. What I'm going to have Brian do, what I'm going to have Brian do here just to show you why this would not work with a wide grip, go ahead and go like max, max pump grip and you can come swing around over here. So if Brian were to, if Brian were to have this sort of bench grip and if you were to Lower the bar to his chest. We're gonna pretend this is fucking 500 pounds here. <laughs> and he's gonna press the bar off his chest and if he starts to drift that bar back over his face, his, his grip is so wide that his elbows are not able to stay stacked underneath his wrist as that bar, yeah, as that bar drifts back over his face. So when you're in that position and that bar starts to drift back over your face and your elbows aren't there underneath you to help catch that bar and to maintain that stability, you're gonna put a lot of strain on those pecs and front delts. And that's generally where we see pecs separate from the bone, which we don't want. So narrow grip, low arch, J-shaped bar path, wide grip, high arch, feet tucked back underneath you, vertical bar path. Are you still talking while I'm trying to do a video? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is not the wedging that I'm talking about. Are you sure? Why does it feel so right? I'm not so sure. Why did it just get even better? Hey, we, we, can, can, we can post that video. I love making. We can post that video. It's just going to go on a different website. <laughs> Jill, that's inappropriate. You're going to have to talk to HR later. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. <laughs> Wedge. I need complete silence while I get a character. Potato wedges. <laughs> you know the potato wedges? Like, just eat those and get out of there and now you're wedged. All right, so for this portion of the video, we're going to cover wedging for the bench press. And I know that might sound weird, but we, we utilize some form of wedging or creating leverage in all three of these lifts and bench press. Uh, <laughs> you guys. I didn't even do anything. Drinking my water. Pop your titties. I saw it. Yeah, you did. I did. Somebody did. All right. Every time. Like, oh, look at this. So, just, just like the squat and deadlift, we utilize some form of wedging or creating leverage for the bench press as well. Also, just like the squat and deadlift, it starts before the actual ex execution of the lift. It starts in the setup. So I'm gonna have Ransom lay down on the bench here. And I'm going to take, take you through a pattern of cueing that I like to show my lifters for wedging for the bench press. So common mistake we see 
that in the bench press, which if we focused on this, it would eliminate a lot of other issues. Is when people unrack the bar, pay attention to the position of Branson's shoulders here as I unrack the bar for them. As we unrack the bar, they allow the shoulders to overly protract on the setup, and we lose any sort of arch here and any sort of stability we have here through the shoulders. So what's happening here is we are bringing the bar up and out. So we want to do our best to bring the bar straight out on the unwrap, which is going to require a lot of work by the spotter. So what I want Ranston to do here as the lifter is we want to roll the bar to the edge of the uprights. What Ranston is going to do here is he's going to push down on the bar as if he's doing sort of like a pullover motion. And this is going to help create a lot of tension through the lats and it's going to help keep his shoulders packed out on the bench. So you see here, if the uprights weren't here, France were to bring the bar out. You can see how much tension he has against the bar there. So he's going to keep that tension as best as he can before the unrack starts. And what I'm going to do as the spotter is I'm going to bring the bar straight out for him so that way the shoulders do not raise off the bench. The shoulders are able to remain retracted and depressed because both of those are important. So key points there, right? Tension against the bar, we're pulling down on the bar. Shoulders are retracted and depressed, right? Pulling back, and then he's trying to get his shoulders as close to his butt as he can. Lat tension here, bring the bar straight out. We've now successfully wedged for the bench press. Another little point to this is a lot of people don't have their bench height set up correctly. So they'll either have it too low or too high. Too high is usually what happens where he's talking about where he will have to really pick up on it and you lose all shoulder tension um, because you really want the bench to where you can pretty much barely clear it just enough yourself. So all the spotter has to do is barely pick up on it. Um, press the bench and is guide the bar. Just guiding the bar. Really, it's pretty much a self unrack. They're just guiding it for you and giving a little bit of uh, help. Um, and then too low, if you have it too low, you pretty much have to bench it up first, which is using a lot of energy and uh, wasting what you could be putting on your toe. There should be very, very minimal vertical movement on a bench on rack. The bar should come straight out into the start position for the lifters. So, yep. all right. All right, so the final thing for bench that we're going to cover is breathing and bracing. Something I really want to make sure that is known is that breathing and bracing in the bench is going to be very different than breathing and bracing for the squat and the deadlift. Um, squat and deadlift, you're going to fill your belly or your canister in a 360 degree fashion. Whereas in the bench press, you're going to think about filling your chest and also your upper back. So we're going to have Ransom demonstrate. Um, both versions, if you were to breathe through his belly and breathe through his back. So first off, he's going to breathe through his belly. And rack. And lower the bar. And you'll see how much lower his touch point is here versus, step that back up, if you were to breathe in through his chest. See how much higher his chest is now? His touch point is now higher, and not only that, he is a lot more stable in through his upper body. The other thing that uh, differentiates the bench press is that your ribs can flare in the bench press, whereas in the squat and the deadlift, we want to ensure that our ribs are nice and stacked over our pelvis. All right. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, is the outro guy. Hey, Brian. That's what you got. Okay. Feed the baby birds. <laughs> All right. Was that last week? That's two weeks ago. Damn it. I missed an opportunity. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming for bench press. Everybody's least favorite lift. <laughs> no, nah, but it was really good info, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we did our setup today, everything up to the unrack. So next week, we'll show you a little bit of execution and how to actually properly bench. We got a pretty big set of benchers here. Couple guys over five. Couple. Couple. Keyword two. Two. Yeah. I suck. One stronger than the rest. Wow. <laughs> okay. And then uh, there's and then she'll show the ladies how to bench. Alright. So if you like the video, share it, subscribe, like, all that stuff. 
whatever they say. Uh, keep an eye out on the Instagram page. We'll have a, a shorter video later this week covering heels, uh, up. heels up versus heels down on the bench press. So keep an eye out on the Instagram page for that video. And then next week we will go through actual execution of the bench press itself.